Our hearts beat to the city streets We begin to feel the fire We rise like tall buildings As the chemicals they take us higher The night's young and it's just begun As she puts her hand in mine We want to chase the night I swear I wanted to play a Swahili song. Hopefully I will play it um, in my next tape. You can only blame the time. I'm doing this thing at like 11.44 p.m. Oh my God, it is an exhausting week and, and an exhausting month because I am going through a 30 day ritual. And it means I'm waking up at 3 a.m. every day and I'm at the ritual until 6 a.m. on the daily. And that's going to take 30 days. And um, the ritual is just all about me. I'm being, I'm transcending from one level of witch doctor to the next level of witch doctor. And this is what I have to do to transcend. And I'm exhausted. <laughs> okay. Then on top of that, I'm trying to do everybody's video. Thank you so much for hiring me, people. And I am enjoying doing your videos. And so, you know, I got to do those so that you all have them in time. And then I have um, the Michael Jackson thing. And speaking about the Michael Jackson thing, I have an announcement to make. Okay. In the last few days, I've been doing a ritual requesting um, Michael Jackson. And this is... Um, something that we do we actually do rituals to request the soul that we want to come and then we wait for a reply and then we do more rituals then we wait for a reply and then you know when we get it all together the soul just walks in through the door with alia it was very easy she just walked in and she just sat and we just talked but michael jackson is not coming from the same place as alia michael jackson is coming from the dark place I mean, the dark place. Let me say that again. The dark place. So, like, I was kind of shocked. And the rituals of extracting someone from the dark place are completely different to extracting someone from other places. Michael Jackson was obviously not Bantu and he didn't practice our religion. So he's not coming from our dark place. He's coming from some other religion's dark place. And um, this ain't pretty, people. So I am having doubts about whether to do the seance or not because because he is a guest of the dark place guess what my dark place is releasing bodyguards for the seance so that's that dark place doesn't do any shenanigans the thing is i'm just warning everybody if you are like a Michael Jackson fan, a really rabid one, and you want to keep his memory, don't watch the video if I download it. If it is too, too awful, I am not going to download it. If it is too, too awful, I apologize. Because those who come from the dark 
place of any belief system or of any religion have done some shit. You know? And they can say some shit. And I just will not entertain it. I won't. So I will check it out first. I'm going to go through it because I need to do it because we've already done the ritual. So I will go through it or I will edit it very heavily. So I will see. But I think society ought to be protected from the dark as much as possible. And I ought to protect myself. So I will see. If I can even watch it again, that is. Because I could never watch Alias again. Because Aliyah gave me heart pain. So every time I tried to replay the video, I got heart pain, right? So possibly I won't be able to re-watch it. So I'm just going to make a quick judgment call and make a decision. He didn't make it. To the place of light. You didn't make it to the middle place. Because we Bantus have a middle place. Where everybody makes it. Okay? <laughs> because we are reincarnated. So everybody makes it to the reincarnation door. He didn't make it to that. He made it to the dark place. So. Yeah. Anyway now that I'm done with the Michael Jackson announcement. I have called you all here. To our tribal council, <laughs> our tribal council people, to discuss Meghan Markle, the reluctant mother to be, and her husband, Prince Harry, who that make lots of babies with African women. <laughs> Megan, Megan, Megan. Megan is my primary source because I have seen a change in her. From a little girl who hated all her blackness to a little girl who's learning to embrace it because of the racism she is facing. So here we go. Megan Markle and Prince Harry. At once. Out come the shelf. We don't want to waste time. Okay. <laughs> we want to know. We want to be in the know. Okay. <laughs> and I am not even surprised. Woohoo. No surprise here for me. Let me take out my spear, which is going to be in great use with Michael Jackson. And I'm going to show you all the great divide between Megan Markle. And her husband. Okay? Now, this would be Harry. And this would be Megan. Yeah, Megan has the smaller thing. It's got a small thing going on there. And this would be Harry all spread out and having a great time. With numerous females. <laughs> All black. Okay. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. And this would be Megan about to give birth. Will highly likely give birth two more times. Something that she will not want to do. And the two creatures or two people, I don't think you can see this, that are sort of like in her life, right? Um, and right here is Megan's mama, very far away from her daughter. And she is the reason I actually wanted to do this reading. I was completely fooled, like you all were by Ms. Megan. I totally thought she had this really close relationship with her mother because her mother was like a lady. She was really there for her wedding and everything. 
I did hear the whispers. I did hear the black girls who went to school with her saying that Megan did not identify with being black. She would never play with the black girls. She would not be seen talking to the black girls. I heard that, but I didn't believe it. You know what I'm saying? She looked so cute, so sweet, so into her heritage. And when she got married, she played that song only for psychic old me to discover that it was Harry who demanded all the black blackness that was in that wedding okay and so i discovered that megan really hated the black side of her and she wasn't close to her mother at all and the mother a magnificent lady she put her best foot forward where her daughter was concerned but she couldn't do it for christmas and she cannot do it she cannot fake it and it was her refusal to, to spend Christmas in England, that made me glean into this. And my ancestor said, mm, let's look at this a little bit more. And we did. We always knew that Megan was a racist towards her own race. I'm okay with her saying she isn't black, by the way. I'm okay with her saying she is what she is because, you know, be yourself, be you, be who you believe, right? So we always kind of knew my ancestors and I that Megan was very anti-black, you know? In Africa, they, they exposed pictures of her where she was behaving all white and she was helping out the poor little black kids and she was having pictures taken and now you can't see those pictures anywhere because she was being so white and just like you're black and you are dirty okay we knew that prince harry was attracted to black women we'd seen spiritually his shenanigans up there in botswana with Swana females we'd seen his shenanigans and by the word He's still flying there by himself and leaving Megan to play the princess because she actually is a princess. Alrighty. So this reading is going to be about the blackenization of Megan, like I said. And I'm also going to look into her marriage. But there's nothing really shocking or surprising here because Harry is behaving like his class and status tells him to. His only problem is that he's attracted to black women. And unfortunately for him, Megan is not black enough. I bet you never thought you'd hear that. Harry wants to go into the hood and pick up a hood sister. <laughs> and if he wasn't a prince, that's where Harry would have gone. Trust and believe that. Also, there's also this little pesky rule that royal families, that the British royal family marries someone who has a sort of bloodline relation to them. And Meghan was the closest to black he could get who had a, the same bloodline as him. They share an ancestor as is what is when you marry into a British royal family. Harry. Is very excited about the baby. He really wants to be a father. He is very, very excited. As if he isn't a father already. Because we see that he has a baby with a black woman. But I think he just generally loves to make babies. Okay? And he just loves biracial babies. Because he cannot get out of the, the bodies of black women. Harry... Is very excited about his coming child, but not so excited about his marriage. Not so excited about his wife. She's too white for him. He just wanted something else. Right? He is going to cheat all his life, of course, because he can. Right? Because he has the right to. A prince has the right to mistresses and the wife cannot say shit about it. And Megan is not going to say shit about it. Megan is going to get used to the idea and she is going to accept it. He's not that invested in marriage and he's actually pretty immature 
He's very, very, very immature and he couldn't care less. The world is his and the world has to bow to him and that's about it, right? Does he love Megan? Of course he does. But now she's a toy that is kind of fading. If she hadn't got pregnant, she would have faded by now. But what a good thing that she got pregnant and she she hasn't faded. So now he's going to enjoy this new toy. Like, you know, he's treating her like she's a new toy for a little while longer before he just tunes out. Is he going to be a good dad? Harry is a good dad. He is a good dad to all his offspring because he's very childish like that. He's also a very good provider to all his offspring. He's very responsible like that. So his child with Megan is going to get a pretty good father. Is he as good a dad as William? No. But, you know, he's a good dad. Going to pay a lot of attention to his child, whom he's wishing will be dark when they are born. This, psych this wish doctor, the psychic, has no issues with Harry. He is promiscuous. He'll always be promiscuous, but he takes that as his Jew as the Prince of England. And, you know, when you marry into the upper echelons of society with the British, and I come from a British colony and live in a British colony, you expect that to be the case. My greatest interests in this whole situation is our Megan. Okay. <laughs> Let us see how this white girl is faring. <laughs> okay. Megan is highly disappointed in her current state of life right now. What she expected to get as a princess, she's not getting it. Right? She didn't expect to spend so little time with her husband. Or she loves dressing up she loves going to meet people she loves having her picture taken she's vain like that she's a very vain female very much into herself right unfortunately for her megan is facing the worst i don't even have to put my hand up there to hear her cry she's facing the worst racism she ever thought she'd face she went into Buckingham Palace believing she wasn't black. Now, having been there for a few months, she now knows she is black. And she is reeling from it. She is reeling. She is screaming inside. Oh my God, I'm black, I'm black, I'm black, I'm black. Unfortunately for Megan, it's only going to get worse because the British people are going to hate her more and more and they are going to be more outspoken and they are going to spew their racism at every opportunity. And she's going to be protected from it as much as possible. But she's not dumb. She can see it. She can hear it. Megan, who only boasted of one black friend whom she made just recently, and she only made her as a friend because of who she is, Vanessa Williams, who is going to have more black friends. Give it a couple of years. You shall be seeing. And this is so weird, but I'm getting it. LeBron James' wife. <laughs> <laughs> around Meghan Markle, I swear. <laughs> she is literally going to go out of her way to find prominent black people. And she is going to make friends with the women because she is going to be very, very isolated and lonely. Now, I feel some type of way about Megan because it wasn't her father's money that put her in the position that she's in. The upper class lifestyle that she enjoyed did not come from her white father. It came from her black grandfather. And he is right here under my little, um, my, under my laptop. He's the one who paid for her lifestyle. He's the one who left her a trust fund. He is... It's his millions that Megan used, used, sorry, to get to these upper echelon people. It was a black man's hard work, a black man's money. 
Megan took the money and ignored her mother because her mother was black. She literally disowned her mother. Yet the love of her mother, people, this woman, while the father was going, she was being the most dignified, strong black woman there is. And she was representing. And she was playing a mother who's adored by her daughter. You know, she did. My God. She did all black women proud. Yet her daughter had been shoving her under a desk because she's black most of her life. Okay. Meghan Markle, who's going to be Mrs. LeBron James's friend. <laughs> Never saw that coming. Okay, <laughs> she never saw Mrs. LeBron James coming. <laughs> she didn't see her. <laughs> she didn't see her. She thought she had purified herself. She did not see her. She is not looking forward to motherhood. Megan is afraid that her baby will be so dark. Do you know how Cardi B has that issue with her child's skin complexion? Behold, Cardi B number two. Megan is so afraid her child will be dark. And dark child is not what she wants. She wants her child to be pure white so that her child can just blend in. We got to feel sorry for Megan. When I put my hand over her shells, I see that she was really racially abused as a child because she was black. You know, uh, ignoring her black side and getting rid of it was more about survival. But she was also born uh, very strategic. She knew that there was no money with black people, but there is lots of money with white people. And she wanted fame and money. And she was a social climber. And you know what? She's smart. I don't hold that against her. I applaud her because you have to be a clout chaser. You have to climb that social ladder to get what you want. Have no shame about clout chasing people. Clout chasing is the name of the game. Okay. If you know anyone famous, write them down in my link. <laughs> <laughs> Write them down in the comments, okay? <laughs> anyway, Megan jolly well knew who owned the world. And so, of course, she identified with who owned the world, right? And it paid off for her. She, she is our prime minister's wife's best friend, okay? But interestingly enough, that's not going to last. Like I said, a Mrs. LeBron <laughs> Is going to be best friends. She's actually going through some shit. And being pregnant is not what she wants to be. She doesn't want this child. She didn't really think that she would have to have a child. She totally thought that she could wave it off and wave it off and wave it off. Because she has this big fear that her child is going to be very dark skinned. Will her child be dark skinned? Let's ask the question. I hear yes, but not in the way we think. I hear that white people will be able to tell that this child has blackness in them. I may not be able to tell, but they will be able to tell. Okay. Will her child face the same kind of similar discrimination that Megan faced? I hear yes. Least favorite royal child is going to be born because of the color of their skin. Least favorite. Hmm. Is Megan going to be a good mother? Let's ask. I hear no. Because, you know, she wanted a full-blooded white kid. Okay? But she will try to have two more. Whether she'll succeed or not is another matter. Because she, she really didn't want this pregnancy to begin with. She'll try to have two more. And um, this woman is holding on to her marriage for dear life. I've heard quite a few seers say there will be a divorce. There's no divorce in this, in this 
in this um on this board because they are already kind of leading separate lives already because megan is very lonely and harry is going to africa for safari <laughs> Harry's safari is two-legged, okay? He, he requires safari quite quite frequently. And it's two-legged and it lives in Botswana, an African country. Please look it up. An African country to the south, right? So he's going, Harry is going on safari by himself a lot, right? Of course, because Megan can't come. And Megan is... um. Well, she's supposed to make tracks, make inroads all by herself. And she is going to succeed, even though the hostility towards Megan by the British public is going to be increasing every day. And the more it increases, the more black Megan is going to be. So at the end of the day, Megan is actually going to be a benefit to black people, even though she started otherwise now i had the honor of spending two days with princess diana when she came to my country see that's how old i am and i adored her she was fun as hell and um i also met michael jackson actually and he he requested a whole lot of kids so there were a whole lot of kids around him and I was, we were all just like looking at him, right? So it's so funny that this week I'm doing people I kind of like met. So I kind of met Princess Diana and she was fun and she told me fun things. And we traveled around Africa together for two days on her private plane. And she didn't even behave like a princess. And okay, to be honest, I didn't even look at her like she was a princess because, you know, I'm also like a princess in my culture. So I, I didn't I didn't feel the power of her of her office because I didn't acknowledge it right so um she was just an older woman I was traveling with and she was a great deal of fun and I was really short and she was very very tall and her personality is very much the personality of her son Harry inherited his personality from his mother which makes him highly unconventional. He loves black people the way his mother loved black people. She really did, people. She really loved black people. She said we were the most compassionate and empathetic. And we don't even know how empath empathetic and compassionate we are. You know, she told me she failed high school. That was fun as hell. She told me about her high school experiences and what have you. Anyway, this um, Harry is exactly like that. But to Megan, she wants her power to be felt. You know, Harry will laugh with you and Harry will make you feel comfortable. And Harry will put you at a level where you are comfortable and happy. Megan, however, will want to be felt, especially if you're black. She's like, know your place, bitch. I made it here. And you're not going to make me look some type of way just because you think I'm one of you and I'm not one of you. But I am happily here to inform you, sister girls. <laughs> That Megan is going through a change, a transition, like I am. It is the season of transition. And Megan is going to be blacker than most of us after the transition is done. <laughs> okay, my final question is, is she going to... Make up with her mother because her mother said, I've done enough for you. I'm done. I want my life back. You go back to your life. Are they going to make up? Are they going to be close after she has a child? I hear no. But the mother, the mom will still be doing her thing. She will still be doing her thing for her daughter in public. It will still be showing. Is there a lot of love? Yes, the mother, she loves her daughter so much, but there's nothing she can do. And Megan herself, she loves her mother so much, she just uh, was caught up in not wanting to be black. And that's it.
that's that's it for now for this couple. I really don't see a divorce because Megan is not letting this marriage go. Come hell, water, or whatever. She's not. It's the office, you know, the office of princess. She's not letting it go. She doesn't care. She will let go of Harry with time and she will ignore Harry. And then she, she would she would have she will make lots of black friends, which will, you know, help her. But she will ignore Harry. But she's staying married to Harry. And Harry will keep going on safari. But he's staying married to Megan. So that's kind of good. Because at the end, Megan is going to do a lot of good for black culture. Even though she started off as the enemy. <laughs> Life is amazing, isn't it, people? So anyway, I'm going to play music. And I'm going to collect. Okay. Okay.